Hey guys, I want to show you my new power bank. It's this uh, big one and it's charging per... Oh, why it's not working? Oh crap, not again. Oh man. Hey guys, and welcome to this new video. Today let's take a look at this Anka power bank, which does feature Bluetooth low energy. And it's really questionable if it's really needed, but yeah, I should take a look into it and reverse engineered the protocol to know more about it. Uh, found a little bit about the firmware and yeah, let's just take a bit closer look. And the pre-roll is of course just the worst case that could happen if you do not have the latest firmware or basically like find another exploit to update the firmware over the air without anyone even touching the device and just carrying it in the backpack. So what we overall have here is this 2700 mAh power bank which does feature like 250 watts maximum power output and there's also a base station where you can just uh, put it on and it will be charged with up to 100 watts. And so far, it, from the power bank perspective, it does work well and it really shows you like a lot of information. If I, for example, will, um, let's take some cable and charge something. It will like perfectly show you how much watt is put out, how much ampere, how long it will last. And you even have like further menus to like see how often a device with a defined uh, yeah, current does get charged until the battery runs out or until the power bank uh, runs out. And you have a kind of menu and let's first take a look at the Bluetooth features. Um, I did take, uh, yeah, I did take the power bank apart to to know what's inside and to get out the firmware, and to reverse engineer the protocol itself and the encryption of the protocol. I did uh, put a bit of it on GitHub, not the protocol description, but the web tool, which allows you to connect to the. Um, Power bank without the official app from Anchor, which does need again to register an um, account and so on. So it's really like, yeah, not nice. But after reverse engineering the protocol, it's like um, possible to do this handshake, this encrypted handshake, which ex uh, consists of the power bank serial number and the account ID from Anchor. But this can just be a random number and, and the yeah, UCC time is used as like the uh, IV. Uh, yeah, this web tool allows you to connect to the web Bluetooth or to the BLE device from the power bank. It does also work on your PC if it's uh, Bluetooth uh, enabled. And you can basically see like the connection is happening. It tells you what um, AES key is used and what IV is used in the end. And also, yeah, you can basically see like um, some values, what is happening, what is the battery status of the power bank itself, like at 100%. Total output is right now 3.7 watts, which is understandable. And also like a few details, as you saw in the overview here as well. Then you also have like a minimal part of settings, like you can let the power bank beep for Searching it is in the description and otherwise you can also change like the yeah, theme of the display on the power bank. It just is this two part one here. You have just very basic information and in the advanced theme you have like more. And yeah, that's basically it. What you can do with the tool right now, you can also send like custom commands and have like a logging of the raw commands that are happening and how the decryption is happening. Uh, it's not really like meant to be used for an overview because why would you want to have like the status on your 
phone. Doesn't matter. It was fun to look into and also to look into the firmware update method. And it turns out the current firmware version, which is 1.6.2, does feature like a signed firmware file. So you have really like fully asynchronous um, yeah, signed firmware updates. So you can not really just upload any firmware to it. But in any firmware version previous to that, you have no signing at all and anyone around without touching the power bank, if Bluetooth is enabled, can basically like, yeah, do a firmware update and run any firmware he wants and maybe even get like too much current internally. So let's not say it will go into flames, but who knows what the worst case would be because you then basically have like direct hardware control. And yeah, let's take a look inside. Uh, yeah, whatever this is. Uh, do not use until protection slipped. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I never had this message. It was like I uh, pulled out the cable too fast maybe, but yeah, doesn't matter. Let's enable Bluetooth again. Uh, opening it up is really like not easy. It is glued and there are like clips holding it in. I was able to get it apart and it still looks okay. And the front is still holding in quite a lot. So it's really still usable, which uh, is surprisingly, but also I'm very lucky because it's like 120 euros just to play around. And I can reopen it now by using a tweezer and Basically lifting it up like I did also the first time But now it's just like way simpler to get it apart um, Because previously it was like not possible really without as you see the The usage signs And Yeah, like so and then we can have a uh, little bit of a look inside the main components is this big soc it's the gd32 f303 it's basically like an stm clone with 512 kilobytes of flash and 64 kilobytes of ram and next to it we have the tlsr 8253 which is used for the ble part and maybe we can even light it up a bit like so, so you can have a closer look. And yeah, other than that, we also have like this Pogo um, PCB here, which is also connected to the main SOC via UART connection. Both SOCs are connected also via UART. You have an RTC chip here. You have an eight megabyte of external flash. And we can see how the clips are now getting damaged more and more the more I open it. But doesn't matter. We have two um, chips that are used via I2C and do like current calculations and see how good the battery is inside. And yeah, other than that, we have the LCD, which is an ST7899, something like that. And more ADC components and other stuff but the interesting part is really like the tlsr which has this svs or sws pin which is used to yeah flash a new firmware or dump the current one and it does not feature a lock function this chip so you could just dump it on the stm or gd chip the lock protection was set so i was not able to dump it but i was able to dump out this eight megabyte external flash and it turned out that this consisted of the firmware update file which is not cleared after flashing it and also after doing a firmware update from 1.6.1 to the latest 1.6.2 which is the secure one i was able to dump again the external flash and get also this newer firmware so i knew exactly what is running inside other than that, there is a bootloader on it normally from, uh, or it has like eight kilobyte of size, which is of course not included in the external flash. And if you would just 
erase it now and refresh the firmware, it would not work correctly, but it's possible um, to still get it running after unlocking and basically losing the bootloader to copy the um, 8 kilobytes of firmware again at the front of the normal firmware where the bootloader would be because then the interrupt vector table still points to the right um, yeah, positions and the firmware runs normally. And so this is now an unlocked SGD chip and I can just not do any real over the air firmware updates but still can emulate everything I would need to do so. So it still would check the signing of the firmware and would only do the reboot if the signing is correct and so on. So yeah, parts of it can be checked out. And another interesting part is that the um, over the air uh, update function does write into the external flash and there is a UN32 value, so an 8 bit, uh, an 4 byte value, which uh, defines how big the new firmware is. And if you write like a super big firmware, you could basically like loop around this 8 megabyte of flash and it would start from zero again and start at the top again and so on. So there's, there could be some way of exploiting this to get the firmware update um, changed and still pass if you have just the right amount of firmware and the right way of doing it. But yeah, it's not done right now. What you will definitely lose at that moment is because the images you see here are partly uh, resisting in this external flash. And if you would just like loop around these 8 megabytes and flash at any other position, you would basically lose parts of it if you write a zero to it. Still, the power bank itself is, is okay, it's usable. I personally don't like such a um a rectangle version i would prefer to have like a flat power bank so you can even put it in like a pocket or so because this way now it needs to be in this in the big space all the time and not like in your jacket or whatever so yeah i will still use it the way it is now and check it out every now and then the bluetooth feature is really only interesting to hack it and not for anything else and yeah just wanted to share check out the github link and also check out the tool if you have this um, notify me if you have any problems using this tool if it's interesting at all and yeah let's see okay have a great day